Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. We are The Movie Couple. I'm Wendy. I'm Dustin. And we are back with our December favorites, the last favorites of 2016. So without further ado, let's get started. We're going to go ahead and start with our favorite trailer, Dustin. This was a tough one because there were two that just kicked off December with a bang. Mm -hmm. And that was The Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and Spider-Man Homecoming. Both of those just hit it perfectly on the head. Seeing how I'm a little bit bigger of a Spider-Man fan, I think I'm going to lean more towards Spider-Man. That's not saying Guardians of the Galaxy wasn't good. I loved right. it. I I just happen to love Spider-Man. He's one of my favorite superheroes. Well, don't worry. I got you covered because my yes. pick for uh, best trailer or favorite trailer of mm. December was Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I love Baby Groot. The second he came on the screen, I remember during the reaction, I just squealed with happiness. <laughs> He's so cute. Um, yes, I'm probably going to buy merchandise because why not? Um, and I do want to give a honorable, honorable mention to War for the Planet of the Apes. I don't think you saw it yet. Um, I think I might have seen it, like, later. It's really, really good. But to me, um, the only reason why I'm picking Guardians over War for the Planet of the Apes is just because Guardians had that little bit of fun, the little bit of sassiness mm -hmm. that, I, that I like, where uh, War for the Planet of the Apes was very serious and very dark, and, you know, as, as it should be. So there you go. This was a weird month for DVD releases. I mean, yeah. nothing really good came out. I mean, Suicide Squad, Jason Bourne. Magnificent Seven. Right. I think that's pretty much it. Snowden. Um, I guess I'd be kind of, I'm a little bit more excited about the Suicide Squad because there's always the extended version, the director's cut, and I'm yeah. kind of interested to see what they would have done. Kind of like, you know, the whole Batman v Superman. Mm -hmm. Everyone was like, oh, the director's cut is it's so better. much better. Yeah. So I'm very interested to see that. My favorite DVD release was Magnificent Seven. I actually loved the movie when I went and saw it. And I don't like westerns at all. Mm. Uh, they're just not my cup of tea. So when I was going to see this movie uh, with, with the members of the press, I was like, well, I don't think I'm going to like it very much. And I walked out. I was so surprised. I laughed. And uh, I, you know, I really bought into a lot of the big action scenes scenes which I thought was great, so I am really excited that Magnificent Seven came out. I'm still bummed that I haven't gotten to see it yet. We're gonna red box it soon. <laughs> I literally downloaded this app on New Year's Eve, December 31st, um, because we were at Universal Studios and there was the Leica Experience uh, that showcased all the puppets and all the figurines mm -hmm. from Coraline all the way to Kubo, which, by the way, um, if you live in L.A. and you're near Universal, go check it out. It's amazing. Um, and they had this this iPad there. They were showcasing the Kubo, Kubo's Samurai Quest, I think it's called. Yeah, Kubo's Samurai Quest. And I started playing it, and it's a puzzle-matching game. But it's so much fun. There's different elements to it, so it's more than just match three. You have to fight uh, evil origami monster. So if you watch the Kubo, Kubo movie, hmm. you know exactly what that means. And uh, the monsters, they get a turn too, so it's not always you attacking, which makes it a little bit more interesting, also a little bit more frustrating. But I've been playing it nonstop. He can vouch for me. Like, oh, yeah. anytime. I, in fact, <laughs> I was playing it right before we started shooting this video. I'm actually playing a lot of Pokemon Go recently. Pokemon And it's Go. cool because now this month, they're doing like all of the original um, Pokemon, the starter one. Mm -hmm. So Squirtle, Bulbasaur, Bulbasaur, and Charmander. There's more of them out there. Yes. So I'm out there catching a whole bunch mm -hmm. and really getting back into the game. This is a little difficult because I'm only reading one book. I got into, I'm going back and reading the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan. I've been dying to get back into this because it's been years and I've never finished the series. But now that the series is done and complete, I want to read them all. So, but the thing is though, the books are like 30 hours long. Yeah. That's all. I, I listen to it when I'm driving. So that's a lot of driving. 30 hours of driving. Whoa. That's like an entire month. And I'm not done with it yet. Because at the beginning of the month, I was still reading Catalyst. Yes. And I got that done like in like, two, like a week. less than a week because I was trying to read through it as quickly as I could. Before Rogue One? Before Rogue One. And I have to admit, it did help the movie <coughs> a lot because then you know what that whole beginning scene's about and the whole backstory behind that. Mm. But I have to admit. It means a little bit more when you see Lyra mm -hmm. on screen. 
But I have to admit, that book is boring. <laughs> the book, I mean, it, it wasn't until the end. Okay, I found a little bit about the kyber crystals interesting, but for the most part, it's boring. I'm like sitting here going, hun, when is this book actually, when is there something going to happen? I told him part two, just make it easier, just keep and it wasn't until get like, it to part two. It wasn't like to the beginning of part three <laughs> that I'm like, okay, this is interesting mm -hmm. and then it ended i'm like okay well i kind of know what's going to happen now in the book in well, the movie yeah well at least at the beginning of the movie right well for me i am still on my star wars book kick so right now i'm currently listening to bloodline the princess leia story god it's so good that's a good one and man i love claudia gray and her the way she writes mm -hmm. i i love lost stars and I am just, I am really in love with uh, Bloodline. I'm not sure if I like Bloodline more than I like Lost Star. I'm going to say no, but it's a close second. But I, I kind of want Claudia Gray and uh, to, to just write all the rest of the Star Wars books. And then you can have Jonathan Davis narrate all of them because he's, he's a good talent. They pick really good voice actors yeah, they do. for all the Star Wars books. And it's cool to have all the sound effects in there too. Yeah, I like it. This was a viral video that I happened to find on my Facebook, but it is a YouTube video. I think we have the same one. Um, it's a little boy. <laughs> that's the same one. Okay, so, no, no, no. Oh, that's not my favorite one. Oh, you're laughing. Okay. I'm laughing because I know exactly what you're I talking about. Because I watched over and over. It's just the reaction of the parents. So uh, it's a little boy playing with the Amazon Echo Dot, and because it's voice activated, you can ask Alexa any questions. And because he is a little kid, you know, he, his like speech two. isn't perfect yet. So he said, Alexa, play Digger Digger or Diggle Diggle. And Alexa started looking for what it sounds like porn because they said porn selection. And I swear the word dildo was used yep. later on. <laughs> and the parents were like, Alexa, no, stop, Alexa, stop, stop, stop. And the boy just kind of walked away like, what did I do? And I was like, honey, you didn't do anything. You're just, you stay innocent. <laughs> but I just thought it was so funny how quickly that escalated. And, it was cool. <laughs> and it's always funny when something like that happens, when it's cute and, and you adorable. Catch it on video. And then you're like, oh. <gasps> <laughs> But mine is actually a new channel that I stumbled upon. Um, it's a science channel called Smarter Every Day. And it's just this guy. Um, I think his, his name is Dustin. It's, or like, like Destin. Destin? But it's not Dustin. Okay. Um, Destin? But of course, he's very Southern. But he's really into science. And he's like, this is really cool. The first video that I saw was about um, how he says that, you know, everyone has the saying has heard that saying, it's, just, it's like riding a bike, you know? But what he did was he found a bike to where the handlebars, when you turn left, or when you turn one way, the wheel goes the other, and when you turn it the other way, the wheel goes the other way. And he was trying to ride it, and he couldn't do it. And it was like impossible for anyone. He went on, um, what is it called, these big trips um, for like seminars and stuff. And he brought the bike with him to prove that no one could do it. And it took him forever to actually be able to learn. And then he was like, I wonder if I can ride a real bike now. And he couldn't, he had the same problem when he hopped on a real bike. And I just thought it was, and all of his videos are really interesting on how he, um, I like the way he talks. I like the way he explains things. And if you get a chance, smarter every day. My favorite holiday memory we haven't done recently, but I've always loved it. And it was my favorite time that my family did it was actually when I got to introduce you to it. Oh, really? Was our Christmas Eve, uh... Abel skewers and uh, um, baked sausage. And oh, mm -hmm. it is always so good. The way my mom does it, um, she always, you know, Abel, if you look up Abel skewers, they're kind of like pancake puffs. And they're little balls. Yeah, and they're delicious. And then you put, put them with powdered sugar. But then she makes these baked sausages. And she put, and it's like in this big pot. And she puts it in the oven for a few hours. And then the great mixes in with the gravy and the different juices. And it's just so good. And, you know, you just get your healthy portion of um, grains and um, cholesterol. It's a great way oh, to celebrate man. Christmas. Um, I, I, that's actually the same one, just because I've, really? I, yeah, I've never been introduced to anything like that before. 
And my first Christmas with Dustin, we were going over, obviously, to to the in-laws. And he said, yeah, we're, you know, I my mom, I'm really excited. I She's going to make Abel skewers or Abel skivers. There's different ways to say it. We so call it, we say Abel we say skewers, skewers, but, but that's my friend, not the right way to pronounce it. My friend calls it Abel skivers. So pronounce it how you, however you like. You know what we're talking about. But, and those are good and all, but the sausages, my God, those are the most, deli- and it's so simple to make too. She just pulls them out of the package, lay them down, brown them on both sides, and she pop it in the oven and that's it and i was like are you sure that's all you do because i feel like when i try to replicate this (laughs) it's not going to be the same (laughs) i think this one's going to be pretty obvious if you follow me on snapchat or on social media (laughs) it's the rogue one world premiere because never in my life have i ever thought i would get to go to any premiere let alone a star wars one so i Wow, that night, I, I, I try to take in as much as I could. I try to Snapchat as much as I could for the um, for the viewers that wanted to see what it was like on the red carpet. But, I mean, when the limo pulled up and all of the Collider crew got out, there was a giant X-Wing just sitting on the red carpet, and you walk past it. And then, no joke, we're pulling up, and we're waiting to get our, our um, badges to get in because you need little passes. And they step to the side, and then I hear, you know, the security guard goes, Kathy's coming. She's coming. I was like, oh, Kathy's coming. Which Kathy is it? And the door opens to her to her car. It's Kathleen Kennedy. She just walks up behind us, just walks past us, smiling. I'm like, what is my life? What is my life? And that is also the same night I got to meet my favorite actor, Nathan Fillion. No, there isn't a picture because I had already locked my phone in a little pouch that is mandatory for anybody going to the premiere. So I couldn't get um, a picture with him. But I said hello, I shook his hand, his hand's like soft like satin, I, I, I can't even, it was, it was fantastic. I didn't get a go, not even a little bit. None of I us didn't got get, a plus one, okay? I know, but not only does she get to go yeah. to this incredible <laughs> premiere, red carpet, but she gets to meet my favorite actor of all times. <laughs> I t- I've told many people this, that... I could meet Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, and be like, oh, hey, how's it going? It's a pleasure. I like your work. I, I If I would meet Nathan Fillion, I'd be like, oh, my God, it's Nathan Fillion. It kind of happened to me. And that's, oh, yeah, she did, like, little circles. I did, like, a circle. Well, what happened was John told this uh, story on, on Movie Talk is he, John knows that he's my favorite, too, because I just, I won't shut up about Nathan <laughs> uh, a lot of the times. And he was like, Wendy, do you see who's in front of you? And I'm not looking at Nathan. I'm looking past him. I was like, what am I looking for? And he's like, no, right in front of you. Now, Nathan's back with, was to us. So I, I didn't know somebody with darker hair, you know, a suit. And I, he's like, don't you know who that is? And I was like, I don't know, Christian Bale? Because um, we had walked past Christian Bale earlier on the carpet. He goes, it's Nathan Philly. I'm like, it's too good to be true. There's no way. I called John a liar. I was like, you lie. <laughs> and then I looked sideways and it was nathan and I did a little circle just like this Woo! <laughs> and what was great is uh i wanted to say hi but i felt like almost embarrassed like i didn't want to bother him at a premiere you know he's with like his dates and he's with his friends i don't know and then perry's like do you want to go in i was like i just want to say hi he's my favorite and he heard me and he turns around he turns on the chime and goes well, hello i'm like ah, ah. <laughs> don't fall just no matter what you do don't fall what was your favorite outing? Well, seeing how I didn't get to go to a premiere. <laughs> um, it, during Christmas time, right around where we are, there's this little area to where everyone in that neighborhood has to do um, Christmas lights. So I've, for the last two years, been wanting to take Wendy. Well, we grabbed our dogs, threw them in the car, <laughs> and you just go up and down the street, and everyone in this neighborhood has these Christmas lights up, and everyone's kind of competing to kind of one up the other (laughs) yeah and they are amazing Mm -hmm. and it has it has such the christmas feel and the christmas spirit and it's really cool to go and see just people who just deck the halls like crazy what was cool too was each street had a theme so we would drive down one lane and it would be like the candy cane lane Mm -hmm. or the christmas hat tree yeah or the little drummer boy lane so i thought that was really cool and and a lot of the houses were kind of in unison so that was really cool to see and i also loved just seeing the little kids you know the family out and about and walking and being away from like the tv and their computers 
um, and just enjoying the holiday. Well, my goals for 2017 is to have a better year than last year, <laughs> which wasn't really setting the bar very high. But in 2016, I did a really good job in September on counting my calories, eating healthy, staying active, and I lost 15 pounds. Um, I gained some of that back, not all of it, but I kind of want to get back into it and seeing how I think I'm going to have a lot more scheduled um days now i want to try to see if i can start taking my lunches packing more healthy foods and also uh, my mom got me this really huge pressure cooker so i want to start cooking up some healthy meals that will last us for a few days mm -hmm. that i can make lunches out of maybe make sandwiches to take to work and save us some money and eat healthier yep that's um, a part of my goal. I mean, every year, you know, at the beginning of the year, I feel kind of refreshed, like uh, almost like starting over. Yeah. In a sense, even though we're not, <laughs> we're not, we're just continuing. But um, it's it's I see it as a way to reset my life a little bit. So yes, um, better eating habits, better sleeping schedules. <laughs> so that's for sure. Um, continue continue to go to the gym. Um, since I didn't go at all during the break, uh, I let myself go a little bit. But one of the main things. I really want to try and to do is uh, have more patience. I have, I don't know if you can tell sometimes when I'm, you know, watching videos, whether it's here on our channel or on Collider, but I have an extremely short fuse. Um, and I will go off on anybody if I feel like they deserve it. And I don't, I mean, I don't care who I, who, who it is. I, if I feel like I need to go off on you because, because, you were there and not in the right time, the right place, you probably, I mean, there's a good reason I usually when I yell at people, but um, I, I think 2017 for me, the key word is patience. I'm pretty sure we both picked the same one on this one. You wanna say it on three? One, two, three. Rogue, Rogue One, one <laughs> by far. I mean, we actually didn't see that many movies this month. No. But, oh my God. God, Rogue One blew him out of the water. Yes. Anything that even kind of came close. Mm -hmm. Rogue One was amazing, and it was such an, a it's good movie on just being able to continue that story and flow from one to another, from um, Rogue One into um, Episode yeah. 4. Mm -hmm. And, oh. That last 10 minutes of Rogue One has got to be my favorite, like, segment of film or you know action piece of, of film of all time i think it's made it into 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 that hall of fame if you will at least for me because a lot of people always wonder why why is darth vader so scary why why is he the evil darth vader and you see him in four five and six and you see his um lightsaber fight with obi-wan kenobi <laughs> which was much slower because well, you know, they, it wasn't like the 70s, right? I mean, yeah. 76 or something, 77. Well, and plus like you had that. a guy that was in a very big, cumbersome costume. Right. And a relatively older guy trying to And the to choreography do... wasn't really the same then than it is now. So to see Vader bearing down the hall, wanting to get the plan, and didn't care who he killed, my favorite part. Um, by the way, spoilers, but if you haven't seen the movie by now, I don't know. Um, sorry for spoiling. Uh, the, when he used the force and he... Lift the guy up. But then he went, and I was just just because he could. Just, I mean, he was already past him, but just because he could. And then, of course, when he shoved the lightsaber in the guy and then the door opens. Oh, Vader. Take it, take oh, it. Vader, just take it. I was like, you're not going to die. Um, yeah, I really loved Rogue One. I can't believe we haven't seen it for a third time yet. Um, well, this, I haven't seen it a second time. We're going to go see it a second time. You still time. need to see it for a third time. I need to see it. We're buying the DVD. Uh, <laughs> um, this movie really reignited my love for Star Wars. I mean, the next day, when after I came home from the premiere, I popped in episode four, and then I watched five and six. Mm -hmm. We did a little marathon. Yeah, and it was amazing. Well, you guys, that's it for us. Those are our favorites of December 2016. Now it's your turn, so go ahead and check out the description box below. I have listed all the questions uh, that we answered in this video. So it's your turn to let us know what your favorites are, copy and paste and all that stuff. Have fun. We love reading your answers. So until next time, 